Southwest Research Institute, where a team of engineers created a powerful turbine only the size of a desk. It can even provide power to a small town. No one held their breath. No headlines warned of a shift. But behind thick walls and quiet steel, a different kind of engine began to turn. Not with water, not with steam, but with carbon dioxide pushed into a state most have never heard of. Supercritical, dense as a liquid, swift as a gas, unseen, unheard. And yet, it might be the key to rewriting how the world makes power. Not from giants or governments, but from a quiet team with a vision. What they built could end the age of steam. And it's already here. Let's dive in. The end of steam. For over a century, the steam turbine ruled unchallenged. It sat at the heart of nearly every power plant on Earth, from coal to gas, from nuclear to biomass. Always the same principle. Burn fuel, heat water, create steam. That steam expands, flows over turbine blades, and spins a generator. Clean, predictable, and perfected. Or so it seemed. But inside the turbine, there's a hidden cost. Steam needs to change its state. From liquid to vapor. That shift demands energy. A lot of it. Energy that never becomes electricity. It's locked inside the process, lost in the transformation. Engineers pushed the limits, refining every curve, every blade, every pressure stage. Still, they hit a wall. Water, for all its value, has boundaries, thermodynamic ones, physical ones. And no matter how efficient the turbine became, it could only ever be as good as the steam inside it allowed. The turbine became a cage of compromise. Strong, yes, but not unbreakable. And so the world waited, quietly, for something better. Not louder, not bigger, just smarter. That answer wouldn't come from pushing steam harder. It would come from abandoning it entirely, from trusting a substance that defied categories, a fluid that wasn't truly a gas or a liquid, but something in between, between the states. Supercritical carbon dioxide doesn't behave the way we expect. It doesn't boil. It doesn't condense. It hovers in a strange middle world, not quite gas, not quite liquid. Scientists call it a fluid, but even that word feels too normal. Under high pressure and high temperature, CO2 reaches a point where the line between phases disappears. It flows like a gas, dense like a liquid. And in that state, something rare happens. It becomes useful in a way that steam can never be. In the supercritical phase, CO2 moves faster, carries more heat, and compresses with ease. It doesn't waste energy changing form. It simply circulates, expands, contracts, over and over. And because it never has to cross that costly boundary between vapor and liquid, it offers a kind of efficiency that used to belong only to theory. To see it work is almost unsettling. The process looks familiar. A cycle of heat, movement, and cooling. But the substance inside is alien. Controlled chaos. A ghost in motion. And yet, in that quiet dance of pressure and temperature, lies the promise of a new kind of power. The man who refused to stop. Dr. Jeff Moe didn't set out to replace the steam turbine, at least not at first. He wasn't part of a billion-dollar energy firm or a national lab. He worked with a small team, tight funding, limited resources, but an idea that wouldn't let go. Most experts said it couldn't be done. Supercritical CO2 was too unstable, too hard to contain. The materials wouldn't last. The seals would fail. The pressures were too high. The temperatures are too unforgiving. 
Even those who believed in the concept saw it as a distant future. Not something for now. But Jeff kept pushing. Quietly. Patiently. Testing designs others had abandoned. Exploring simulations no one had time for. What drove him wasn't ego. It was a curiosity. And something deeper. The belief that we were missing something right in front of us. That the problem wasn't physics. It was fear. He didn't try to outbuild the steam turbine. He sidestepped it. With something smaller, stranger, and infinitely more elegant. The loop without limits. A traditional steam cycle is full of noise in its pressure, in its heat, and in its losses. It begins with water, heated until it boils. Then steam drives a turbine, cools down, condenses, and starts again. Each phase shift steals something. Energy disappears into the process. Some of it never comes back. But with supercritical CO2, there is no boiling, no condensation, no pause to change state. The loop flows like breath, continuous, steady, efficient. Heat is applied to the CO2, pushing it to extreme temperatures, over 700 degrees Celsius. It expands in the turbine, delivering mechanical power to a generator. Then, instead of condensing, it cools just enough to be compressed again. Dense enough to save energy. Fast enough to keep the cycle alive. Nothing evaporates. Nothing is wasted. And in that simple fact lies its genius. No phase change means fewer moving parts. Less wear. More control. All in a machine no bigger than a dishwasher. The heart of the system isn't just the turbine, it's the absence of interruption. A flow without friction. A rhythm without resistance. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. Power in a box. When engineers first saw the prototype, some laughed. It was too small. Too simple. A joke compared to the towering giants of traditional power plants. But they weren't looking closely enough. What stood before them wasn't a miniature. It was a shift. Supercritical CO2 turbines don't need massive cooling towers. They don't demand endless pipelines of water. They don't sprawl. They condense. They focus. A system once spread across buildings can now fit beneath a desk. Ten times smaller, yet no less capable. That scale isn't just a convenience, it's a revolution. Because smaller means mobile, modular, decentralized. It means power where it's needed, when it's needed, without waiting for infrastructure, remote factories, isolated villages, disaster zones, places where steam could never go. This machine could arrive and begin. And in the hum of that quiet box, you wouldn't hear the future approaching. You'd hear it running, steady, clean, relentless. A power source built not just to impress, but to disappear into the background, doing its work in silence. The hidden cost. But no breakthrough comes without its shadows. To keep carbon dioxide in a supercritical state, you need heat that melts metal and pressure that cracks steel. Materials fail. Seals leak. Sensors drift. This isn't a system that forgives mistakes. It demands precision, always. The alloys must withstand temperatures above 700 degrees Celsius. The chambers must hold pressures reaching 200 deep bar. Every weld, every bolt is a point of risk. And then there's time. These systems can't just work in a lab. They have to run for years, non-stop, without faltering. That kind of endurance isn't built overnight. It's tested in silence, over months, 
In empty rooms where failure leaves no smoke, just stillness. Cost matters too. Exotic metals, high-grade compressors, precision manufacturing. They don't come cheap, at least not yet. And before any of it can reshape the grid, it has to survive the slow machinery of regulation. Because even the most elegant cycle must first pass through the grind of human approval. Light for a billion. If the numbers hold, everything changes. A 10 to 20% gain in efficiency might sound small, but on the scale of global energy, it's enormous. If retrofitted across existing plants, coal, gas, or even nuclear, this single change could unlock over 2,000 terawatt hours of electricity. That's not just math. That's light in dark windows. Power for 1.2 billion people. Old power stations could breathe again. Their bones are unchanged, but their hearts have been replaced. Instead of tearing them down, we could transform them. Feed in the same heat from fuel, from the sun, from anything, and get more out. With less waste, less space, less water. And while the world chases new energy on distant horizons, this is something we could do now. Not theoretical, not in 20 years. The turbines already spin, the cycle already runs. It's not about building more, it's about using what we have better, turning every plant into something cleaner, quieter and smarter. Starting today, a future waiting for permission. The technology is real, the turbines exist. They hum in quiet rooms, proving the impossible one rotation at a time. And yet, the world hesitates. It's not the science that slows us down now. It's the system. Regulations written for steam. Safety codes are bound to water. Approval processes that are today the rules of yesterday. Before any plant can be converted, forms must be filled, tests repeated, and politics navigated. Manufacturers face another barrier, cost at scale. The alloys needed aren't ordinary. The seals are custom, and scaling precision is never easy. For now, these machines are still rare, still waiting for adoption, waiting for someone with power and patience to say yes. But there's hope in how quickly things can change. Just one successful project. Just one utility willing to try. After that, the pattern spreads. And when it does, it won't feel like a revolution. It will feel like a quiet improvement. One day, your light switch will work as always. But the energy behind it will come from something new. Smaller. Smarter. Invisible. The age of steam began with noise and smoke. This one begins with silence. We often imagine the future as loud, filled with sparks, shouts, and spectacle. But sometimes, the real breakthroughs arrive quietly. Not in headlines, but in hums. In turbines that spin without steam. In cycles that lose nothing. The supercritical CO2 turbine isn't just an engineering marvel. It's a reminder that progress doesn't always look like change. Sometimes it hides in what stays the same. The wires, the lights, the warmth in your home, all powered more wisely. This isn't just new technology. It's a quieter kind of future. And maybe that's exactly what we've been waiting for.